Hello and welcome back to the 10th episode of Kerbal Space Exploration. And after the last episode I did some rearranging of the space station just to make it look better. But I realized we're having some serious FPS uh, lag so we'll have to do something about that. But first we are sending up some more modules and we are just uh, time warping and uh, post editing speeding this up to make the launch go quicker and um, yeah these are just some storage tanks or they're actually nothing yet but I will uh, in uh, later movies I'll change them out with fuel tanks but it was just a test for now and I didn't think of using uh, using them for anything specific it was just a design thing but I realized I can use them as fuel tanks in the future. But anyway, we are doing a normal rendezvous. And um, I, if I don't remember wrong, this didn't go... Yeah, it didn't go quite correctly, the launch. Uh, this whole episode, I was actually watching Top Gear while I was uh, recording. So I wasn't paying attention all the time, but it still still got to do all the things that I needed to do and we're just bringing it close to the station making sure our intersect is getting close and I've done this uh, two modules at once because they're so light and uh, easy and uh, I know now that the uh, launch vehicle you saw earlier that it can take about 12 to 15 tons into low carbon orbit so it's been a good design and I use it uh, a lot now for most of our station stuff. So just decoupling the, um, the drone part and getting rid of that. And then we go back to the station and get our Kerbal out. And I'm not sure if you can see the name of this Kerbal, but uh, let's see when he gets inside if we can see what his name is. Um, so yeah, going, decoupling or de-docking and going into the um, tug. So no, we cannot see the name of this Kerbal, but I changed the name, uh, one of the names in the name list to Wearing Storm. So Wearing Storm is actually now flying around, or I am actually now flying around, uh on curb or outside carbon in the space station or actually now i'm flying the tug but yeah we're just doing a normal uh, tug and dock and this space station hasn't gone exactly as planned uh first of all we got the f huge fps lag i was talking about and on the end of this episode i cleaned that out uh i think i found the, uh, the main cause of it and also there, for some reason, this tug uh, keeps uh, self-destructing when you load it up. So I send up a new one. It looks almost completely the same and it doesn't have the same problem. So I guess it's just a bug in the game or something. But uh, yeah, while doing this, the, the tug just self-destructed like 10 times and I was getting pretty annoyed. I'm just flying this things and then suddenly the whole thing just exploded. But uh, yeah, these are going to be docked next to the solar array. I thought that was... Um, it looked nice having like uh, the living module and everything connected on top. And then we can have fuel tanks and all the stuff we're sending to our uh, keythane rig later. And we're just bringing this closely in. And uh, you can see that I now put the dragon on top. I put the solar panels in a different direction uh, since the last episode. And I think what makes the lag is the command module, the um, ones, one we sent up first, and the spinning rings. So we'll try to take those uh, or change those with something else. So. Uh, because on the end of this uh, episode, when I'm filming the last module coming up, uh, it's uh, almost impossible to get to the station. So we we 
have to do something that makes the whole thing uh, more stable and um, we can have some FPS lag because I'm anyway I'm uh, speeding it up so you guys don't have to see the whole thing but um, I have to be able to fly uh, the spacecrafts to get close so doing some rearranging after this episode too to see what what we can find what does make all the lag and we are just deorbiting this engine as normal nothing uh, reusable about this space program I don't know how many of you are watching uh, Scott Manley but um, I realized that he and I are making a pretty um, similar episode or it's similar so far uh, uh, it's just coincidence actually I planned this uh, this Christmas this whole episode or this series so even before I started making the tutorials I had planned what I was going to make but it's fun to see that uh, somebody else and to see uh, the different ways uh, one tackles your problems now he was probably a bit smarter than me because he used a lot of stock parts in the beginning for the space station while well, I'll, um, I'll have to change those out but I think um, I'll just change those uh, in between an episode so the next episode the uh, space station will be changed a bit uh, so you don't have to see me spending hours and hours finding the lag and getting rid of it and building some new station parts but as of now this station starts looking really great and I wished we could have kept it like this because this is my intended design having the space station like this but now to continue our mission looking for the Keythane um, we sent our Keythane probe to Minmus instead this time because that was what I was actually going to do the last time but I sent it to the moon instead so using the same rocket as we always done and uh, I don't see a reason why I should change the rockets each time because the launch vehicle works and does the job nicely and uh, this is just uh, a normal keythane run but to talk about the future plans on our keythane I'm thinking of first scanning the moon and Minmus to see where I would like to build a station around it so we'll have a low Minmus or moon station flying around uh, with fuel tanks and a small crew compartment um, and that should be about it then we'll send a rover down to find the exact position of our first Keythane mine where we will um, excuse me where we will um, start digging for keythane so the rover will just drive around and find a good landing spot and it will be our landing beacon for our next or our drill unit and um, I'm also uh, since I've been now watching Scott Manley do the same kind of thing he made this uh, great looking space uh, train so I think I'll cope copy some of his design because that or ID at least because that was a really good idea of pulling a large amount of cargo from one body to another so yeah just starting scanning the moon Minmus for Keythane I'll, uh, I will leave it running through the night and this is our new living area to switch out with the other living area that is giving us the huge lag and it's just the same launch vehicle as always and same launch procedures except from some weird spinning out on the end but we managed to save it even though it changed our orbit quite a lot and our intercept with the space station missed a little bit but we'll just have to do some rendezvousing as always but yeah once we get the keythane uh, rig up and running on Minmus or the moon uh, we will start 
uh, drilling for ketane of course and converting it into fuel and then we'll fly it up to the station over or our ketane station we can call it uh, for now and um, once the fuel tank tanks up there are full we'll connect it to our space train and fly it back to Kerbin and once we filled up the space station close to Kerbin we will um, start exploring deep space we'll send up the deep uh, space vessels we need with high efficient engines and everything and uh, living units and everything and connect them to uh, Kronos as we, I renamed the space station to I forgot to say that I need renamed my space station to Kronos the Kronos the god before Zeus so you can guess what the next station is going to be called since this is the god before before Zeus but yeah we'll connect all the parts to the station that's why we're having the docking uh, array and um, we'll then assemble the deep spin space uh, vessel and refuel it and fly to I want to start with Duna I think just because I haven't been to Duna that much I've been to a couple of times but I think it's a good place to start building our first colony and hopefully we can get some of this done before uh, the 0918 um, update comes along um, for those of you uh, who haven't seen it yet um, the KSP dev team has a live stream every um, every uh, Monday at 7 or 17 19 greenish mean time on Twitch and they also have uh, now started uh, writing a weekly article on uh, Tuesdays I think about uh, the development of the game so yeah we're getting a re-entry and uh, rovers and a lot of cool in-game stuff but in 019 or 020 we probably will get resources and that kind of makes our keythane rigs obsolete maybe we'll see uh, and if that turns to be the case we'll have to do some rearranging but hopefully none of the new parts or none of the new updates will be a save um, won't ruin the save but if it does we'll just have to do build everything again but then we'll probably build the whole station and everything in just one episode just to get back on track so yeah, the new living module is now connected, and I did this a little bit more complicated than it needed to be, since I'm carrying the whole docking array with me. But it was just uh, to get or have less uh, less um, Tetris with the space station, because rearranging it the first time there was a lot of Tetris uh, with it. I had to I had all the parts decoupled and flying around in the orbit and trying to keep them close while I was uh, reconnecting them. So this is just another way of doing it simpler. And uh, with this new living area I will probably deorbit the inflatable rings and uh, the living area or the command module and we'll use this part instead because it will reduce our lag so by quite a bit it doesn't change my fps that much i think but it uh, definitely made my whole control surfaces and um, everything work better so we'll probably deorbit everything else and if we had uh, re-entry effects i would probably make a movie about that so when we get to re-entry effects we'll definitely have to deorbit something big like maybe the space station if the new parts will make uh, our space station obsolete we might have to or might not have to but we might want to deorbit the space station that would be, look really cool i think it would be so cool to see that whole thing burning up in the atmosphere and seeing all those flames then we'll probably have to make the whole thing extra cool to watch we'll probably put it on a high electric 
elliptical orbit giving us maximum entry speed as possible but yeah, uh, this time I'm not flying the tug, it's one of the other Kerbals, but um, yeah, one of the Kerbals on the space station is now called Wearing Storm, so that's kind of fun. Uh, you can change that in the save file, but you should make a backup of it in case you do anything wrong. And even though this is sped up, I think you can see some of my lag issues if you see the spinning ring it keeps stopping and uh, the controls aren't that responsive so i'm having almost no frame rate here at all this is sped up by eight times and it looks like normal uh, frame rate so yeah here we see some of the lag so i rearranged the station and this is what it will look like from now on and we'll connect some fuel tanks to it and start collecting keythane. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If there's any question, just comment below. And if you want to watch the progress, I am now tweeting. The link is in uh, or on my channel. So hope you enjoyed the episode. Please like and subscribe. Wearing Storm signing off.